Okay, so um, judges ready? Opponents ready? My time starts now. When Edison brought the light bulb to the world, he was mocked by the British Parliament. When the Wright brothers were the first working plane, they were criticized by the French army. And when Darwin proposed the theory of evolution, he was belittled by the scientific community. Yet, the impacts of these factors have only proven to be monumental. What we see on Cypro is that sometimes all we need is a little optimism. Our belief in space technology took us to the moon and back. This technology will take us even further, proud to propose. Framework. We take class at the term of metric in today's debate. This is because life is a prerequisite to all else. Position one, healthcare. So point one, combating viruses. The wild poly virus has paralyzed 350,000 people every single year since its first appearance in 1988. And according to CNN, they used the personal data by tech companies and location determination, creating health condition databases, eradicated polio in 60% of India in just three years. Total 2014 says that among 1.27 billion Indians, not even 1% got polio. The Global Eradication Initiative reveals that data is the lifeblood of the polio program, and tech companies such as Jan, Ali, and Bilo are the key in this fight. Moreover, viruses are also combated by drug distribution, which ties into my second sub point. So point two, drug distribution. A program developed by tech companies called SMS for Life used personal data to improve the distribution of malaria drugs in rural Tanzania, reducing facilities without stocks from 78% to 26%. Covering 135 villages, the company has also provided 500 million ACT drugs, saving more than a million lives. Personal data can also do so much more. From stopping Ebola to tuberculosis to, um, to more, polio and malaria are simply a drop in the bucket. In fact, combining all the benefits tech companies use of personal data within the medical industry has created, we could save 7 million lives and $260 billion every single year. Condition two, security. Step point one, crime. Because of crime analysis has been initiated when tech companies started to, use, uh, started to work with the LAPD in 2010. The most well-known predictive policing software, Prepol, gathered different private data such as crime type, location, and date to predict where crimes are likely to occur with 500 square feet position. In regions of Prepol, there are, um, there's been a 33% reduction in burglaries and 21% reduction in violent crimes. A McKenzie report in June 2018 shows that the smart deployment of data-driven tools help reduce fatalities by up to 10%. Lower crime incidents by as much as 40%, and as time goes on, it will only get better. Sub point two, fraud. Current not present fraud costs online merchants more than six billion per year. In fact, a study with Javelin Strategy and research revealed that more than half of cardholders are affected. VA is a layer of fraud prevention that helps diminish risk and CMP for financial institutions and retailers, benefiting more than 8,000 in financial institutions in 129 countries. And according to the Business Wire, of the usage of AI, VA has helped financial institutions provide an estimated 25 billion in annual fraud. The Government Office for Science provides a link between AI and personal data that defines AI as the analysis of data to model some aspects of the world. The only way to fuel AI development is through trials and errors learning process using massive amounts of, massive amounts of personal data. In fact, Bloomberg says Visa using personal data has kept global fraud rate has, at historic lows, less than 0.1%. Sub point three, lives. In Cali, Colombia, tech companies use personal data to reduce homicides by 38% per 100,000 inhabitants in just three years. In Bogota, this rate dropped by 60% over nine years. In certain parts of Manhattan, robbery rates dropped by 95%. Worldwide, crime dropped by 40%. In fact, with personal data, we are in having saving 2 million lives every year starting from five years ago. Personal data is a vital part in saving lives. From the hospital to the alleyways, our safety has never been as well defended. With hundreds and thousands of lives saved every day, we can only say one thing. Personal data is more beneficial than harmful. So proud to propose. Is everyone ready? Okay, our time starts. Now, we negate the resolution framework. We should follow a cost-benefit analysis where we weigh the harms and benefits. Contention one, data breaches. When using personal data, tech companies fail in protecting data from criminals, causing identity fraud and scams. In 2013, the New York Times states how three billion Yahoo users, email addresses, birth dates, and phone numbers were exposed. CNET 2019 says Facebook left 540 million records exposed in dangerously insecure plain text format. Overall, according to the independent, data exploitation of tech companies has caused a $1.5 trillion loss in cybercrime. Contention two, healthcare harms. Step point A, fake healthcare ads. As NPR states, pharmaceutical companies spend $4 billion a year on consumer ads, targeting consumers based on their health conditions and sending them fake drug commercials. It shows that people are more likely to buy medicine or commercials than listen to actual doctors. However, these drugs are dangerous. The NAPP 2018 records that in the U.S., 98% of online drug sites do not require valid prescriptions. 
The, the Guardian reports that fake medicine kills 250,000 children globally per year, posting a devastating alert on targeted ads. Subpoint B, insurance discrimination. ProPublica reports that health insurers gather more patient data from data brokers, boosting their profit by signing up to help healthy people and avoid sick people. Tech companies help hospitals to analyze patients' health records, causing, causing hospitals to deny them health coverage due to pre-existing health conditions. According to KFF organization, there are 54 million Americans with pre-existing health conditions who potentially could be denied of health coverage. And also, even if these people do get coverage, insurers charge them with even more. According to Time Magazine, 92% of health insurers charge women as much as, as over $1,200 a year more on base based on data analytics. According to The Verge, where people are identified as 20% riskier in health and will be charged more for insurance. Contention three, high mortgage costs. Mortgage is the loan, loan borrowers must pay to purchase a home. According to Vice, credit companies have started to gather more detailed personal data from financial technology companies, such as Equifax, to issue credit scores. They target racial minorities based on zip codes and issue them with higher mortgages. The score rates have cost $371 billion among racial minorities in three years. In another example, facial recognition enables financial technology leaders to charge minority borrowers 6 to 9% more money. Minorities are further trapped in a vicious cycle of poverty. Contention for discriminatory policing. According to Vice 2019, predictive policing leads to policemen trying to find crimes in places they've been told to look for, harming innocent people by pure chance. The US government analytics states that it relies heavily on Google Analytics. An example of this is from ProPublica, where it explains how the formula wrongly labeled black defendants as future criminals at twice the rate as white defendants, and 80% of the information was inaccurate. Contention five, risk of violence. Tech companies deliberately sell customer data to make profit. According to the conversation, data brokers sell lists of rape victims in absences of domestic violence shelters. Reuters explains how during 2017 in Myanmar, targeted ads from personal data caused the spread of hate speeches. New York Times states that Facebook is the only source of information for 20 million people in Myanmar, forcing them to only see the misinformation. 43,000 people were killed and thousands raped and assaulted. Independent UK states that 1.1 million Rohingya refugees fled. Other examples come from New Zealand, Sudan, India, Sri Lanka, and many other poor regions. Thus, we strongly negate the resolution. Thank you. Crossfire. Crossfire, do you need prep time? So I guess everybody ready? Um, so our time starts now. So firstly, on the, on the point about data breaches, where you said that it's costing you $1.5 trillion, um, how are customers harmed? For what way? What happens is that there's identity fraud and email scams. Because, for example, okay. your data is taken away and it is exposed on a website. Such as, for example, in Facebook, okay. they put it in a dangerously insecure plain text format. What happens is that if Sorry. your email out there, then the hackers are taking back your data. And because of this data, they're taking it sure, and they're sure. causing you to send email scams to you. And what happens is that poor sure, people are all over these and um, causing people to harm sure. the Okay, now moving Sorry, on to our audio Sorry? Okay, so moving on to my question. So if only 10, so 3.49 times more black people were shot by, shot by white, the black people than white people were shot by Pred polls specifically because of your evidence on your side. So how is Pred poll necessarily beneficial to society? Okay, so firstly, when you're asking about a specific group of people, first thing we tell you that that's not society. Your stakeholder, your targeted stakeholder, it was not and never society. The evidence we're talking about is as general as what we're benefiting for society. Yes, we do agree that some, in some cases, um, later on in rebuttal, we may actually rebut your cases. However, what we're telling you is that as society as a whole, there's these crime reductions. So moving on to my question. So, uh, sorry, and uh, sure. Okay, so however, you brought up the example of Predpol, and we tell you that 3.49 We'll deal with that later. We'll deal with that later. I told okay, you that we'll deal with that later. It's not a point for a rebuttal yet. So firstly, on the point about, um, so on your argument about like um, health ads, like on your point about health ads, I, I would ask like, so people are efficiently, are actually targeting people to sell them health ads and not actually like a 
wide dispersal? Is it a wide dispersal or is it a targeted ad? So what happens is that, for example, I go on Google and search up for knee pain medicine. And what happens is that Google identifies you as someone who needs knee pain medicine. And because okay, of this, okay, that you got it. that actually send you knee pain medicine, that is actually fake okay. drugs. They don't actually help your body. Okay, and okay. Our question. Sure, sure. So if the crime rate has reduced on your side, then why has the U.S. crime rate has stayed the same since 1960s when data didn't even exist back then? So firstly, when we're talking about a general data, we don't see how pointing out specific areas make any valid response to that. But furthermore, we tell you that unless you give us a counter evidence directly on how generally and globally this rate has decreased, or if, for example, you give us specific evidence um, countering or evidence on Manhattan, we don't see how this evidence of U.S. works at all. But furthermore, I'll to ask you a question. Uh, sorry, um, I'll to ask you a question about like about like um, predictive policing. So. Uh, this, so basically, despite on the people, on the point about how black people are shot, are there any more actual impacts? Yes, for example, in ProPublica, where it explains how the formula wrongly labeled black defendants as future criminals okay. have to Thank point you. Right black defendants. Roberto? I want to run in Pratt, thank you. Sure. Okay, I'm ready. Sure. Since we're all ready, yes, okay, opponents, judges, already, observers, my time starts now for his framework. Jeff Quintelli is saving millions of lives suffering from disease, outweigh any millions of dollars lost. His life is a prerequisite of all else, without which our are dear judge should consider before anything else. Judge, even in a bio framework, let's see why we went on arguments. Our, like, our rules gave us like lots of ideas, and let's see why, why they're not standing firmly. First, the breaches. They talk about one point of trillion dollars lost, but actually we ask it about how are consumers actually harmed? Like direct harm of consumers, they answer nothing. Uh, no, just claims been without any data, so actually we tell you there are no direct harm with consumers at presented no in their case were in their crossfire, so they had actually no to prove the magnitude. Here we tell actually the topic came to be safe, uh, the problem came to be safe because according to U.S. government, survey conducted by Mary Tong, 90% of respondents saw decline in the security breaches, here 85%, 84% used uh, used privilege to help block attacks. Here we tell the consumers saw decline in security breaches, which means actually consumers feel the development of those areas. And second, we tell their logic as to the off-topic because with, whether using personal data or not, personal data or not, tech companies are also holding your data, and all your data are in the databases. The problems our opponents mentioned, like data breaches and hackers, are happening because the database are actually valuable, so the hackers hack them. So even we're not using personal data, the tech companies are all like hackers and data breaches are the same. So what we prove is that we're not only solving this problem, but making additional benefits as well. Okay, here I'll also tell you, according to our solution in our case, we win both arguments. First probability, personal data is a must benefit in our case, because, but our opponents failed to prove that every link is related to personal data and tech companies. Second, uniqueness, pro is nuclear fighting fraud and scams, we can't feel given a solution, but impact and cause is totally non unique. Three magnitude. We actually tell that I used to get their money back. June 2019, actually saw enforcement actually led to more than 230 million dollars lost in refunds. People who lost money because of the leakage in the last past four years, like people have cashed more than one billion dollars in after secret checks. That's our opponent's arguments in my two small computer hours. And second argument about uh, did a dangerous drug. They talk about the, the 250,000 children were killed every year. So here we tell judge their link is too weak because first, as published uh, on like uh, like uh, social media, doesn't equal tech companies using pro data. There are two main ways not even tech companies are using pro data to actually kill the children. First, because 
Tech companies only provide ad space for those like medical institutions. They put their ads in the space. Tech companies are not using proof data. They just provide you the space, but not giving the data and to put you like put out target ads on you. Second, there are actually like uh, even thousands of different ways to harm the consumers, which means actually they are uh, just attend, like attending their intention in the different ways, which means they're actually non unique again. And third argument, high mortgages. Actually, we see no impact uniquely from a topic and any direct loss for consumers. And fourth argument, pretty pleasing, will tell you discrimination as actually beyond the truth. Because according to the cards we have, according to sciencenews.com, there have been no empirical studies on the bias of predictive algorithm used for police control, proved by the Los Angeles predictive policing experience. We found that there were no significant differences in the proportion of arrests by racial ethnic group between country and treatment conditions. What this card explains is that actually, judge, we tell you those who are killed because of discrimination between humans. Those policemen killed with, uh, like those criminals because they're black is because human nature, but not a topic. Okay, so actually, a uh, fifth argument about risk of violence would tell you that 43,000 people are killed. It's actually not something to talk about topic, as the card itself doesn't have a strong link. That's what we see. They have lots of arguments, but not all setting firmly and also looking at our case. Why we should win this thing? It's because first we tell you AI is actually reducing human bias, which is actually like decreasing uh, discrimination in our case. Because machine learning always learn to consider only the variables that improve their predictive accuracy based on a trend they use, which reduces bias in decision making. For example, John Clare and others have shown that organisms could have reduced racial disparities in the criminal justice system. In a study found that automatic financial underwriting systems are particularly benefited historically on the surface of applicants to call Andrew McKinney the MIT working on bias uh, solutions. If you want to buy this, I'll give you all this. I mean, Ashley Jack will tell you our main impact about life saving because we gave you 7 million lives actually saved every year. That's why we say we should outweigh all their impacts. Judge, life saving is everything um, before everything else. And we tell you if they don't have life, they can't even suffer from those things. And we have to give the right to people who affect people who actually have the right to leave on. So that, Judge, as we are actually uniquely saving those lives and our opponents, never give us more uh, impact than life. We should win this debate. That's why we strongly urge for pro battle. Thank you. Time's up. Yeah. So is everyone ready? My time starts now. At the beginning, they proposed this theory of evolution and autism. However, we tell you that we should definitely prefer status quo benefits that are happening right now other than futuristic thoughts or assumptions that happen in the future. We are to the contentious. The contention one was health first. So point A, we talk about the coronavirus. First of all, we tell you that the coronavirus has been around for four months. The tech companies have not been successful have not been able to successfully predict and stop the coronavirus from spreading. We'll also tell you that they gave you this example from India, where you never mentioned how tech companies directly take part in this process of India, so therefore this is irrelevant. Okay, there's some point B was about how they're going to improve distribution of drugs, and this is going to save 7 million people. However, we tell you first, distribution of drugs has nothing to do with tech companies at all, and even more, it has nothing to do with personal data. It is the organizations or the hospitals giving out these drugs, not tech companies, so we delete their argument on this or we also tell you that healthcare is wrong for a few reasons. Firstly, tech companies only worsen health sectors vulnerability to attack. According to Laura Sheen of Forbes 2015, healthcare links accounts for 43% of data links per year. We tell you that tech companies worsen this, these problems because they're selling, they're selling and actually providing our information for other health institutions. As a result, we tell that our opponents cannot access these benefits for, because according to Rock House Survey, it reports that people are not willing to share their data with tech companies. 10% of people are willing to share their data with tech companies, while the other 90% are not even willing to give their data to tech companies in the first place. So they cannot access their benefits because tech companies are people, people are not giving their data to tech companies in the first place. Okay, moving on to a second question about security. First, they talk about crime. 
will be specifically an example of prepl, which has that prepl is wrong for a few reasons. Because according to Forbes, prepl oversimplifies the problem of crime, such as unreported crimes and unnecessary cop call, and they actually do not consider the individual freedom of pop cops to decide whether to meet someone. Eventually, we said the prepl gets into self-reinforcing feedback loophole, and 80% of the information on prepl is inaccurate. As a result, black people are 3.5 times more likely to be killed than the white people specifically because of prepl. Then they tell us how they can reduce crime in specific areas like the U like areas like Manhattan in the US. However, we tell you that overall crime rate in the US has stayed the same since the 1960s, according to the US Institute of Justice. We tell you that even if they can solve these crimes in specific areas, the overall big Big data and the crime rate has stayed the same, so therefore they do not solve these solutions. Even though we also tell you that hate speeches is also a problem that worsens security, we tell you that because tech companies like Facebook are spreading these hate speeches online through targeted advertisement and targeted posts, we tell you that 1.1 million refugees actually left Rohingya. We also tell you that 43,000 people have directly been killed because of these terrorist and extremist groups. So we tell you that people are being killed right now because crime and crime is not solved on their side. Their subpoint view is basically about fraud and how AI solutions. However, AI solutions doesn't equal to tech companies using their personal data. So again, we believe that their side is irrelevant in this case. And then they talk, and then they talk about how they can stop how they, they can stop data breaches. We actually tell you that tech companies worsen worse the problem of data breaches because other smaller companies are storing their data in tech companies. We tell you that specifically. For example, in 2018, Microsoft had a big data leak where 14 million records were lost and billions of dollars were lost. Not only were Microsoft's own data leaks, other smaller companies that believe and trusted Amazon and Microsoft also had their data leak because they were storing data in these AI and cloud storage platforms. So we tell that all businesses are affected by this. Okay, moving to the responses to our case. First, they tell us that there's no harm from data breaches, but we tell you that first, there's this economic harm, that $1.5 trillion boom in cybercrime. We tell you that this goes to entire society as a whole because economy affects entire society. We also tell you that second, you do not want your information to be leaked to hackers because then your information will be sold off to the dark markets. And and we tell you that identity fraud can be conducted. And then we tell us false ads is only ads. However, we tell these ads are creating definite impacts because, of, because people are killed because they're trusting these false ads. Crossfire. So, our time starts now, as actually, you missed answer my question. I was asking what the direct harms on consumers because one point five trillion dollars big number. I didn't feel that. I'm one of the society, right? The data theft. You do not want your data. Everyone in the world is going to know your data, and your data is going to be sold off to the black okay, market. Okay, going to know my data. Isn't it happening right now? Where your impact is like. Claim. It's happening right now. When data leaks happen, hackers stole your data for a reason. They sell your data for money. Moving on to my question. So you talk about how there's this distribution of drugs. How, how is that linked to tech companies at all? Facts. Okay, so uh, in our case, we gave examples for SMS for Life. That's actually tech company. They are actually helping drug distribution because they know your data and they have the data because they can make it more efficiently. Also, for our polio virus, we never mentioned COVID nineteen in our case. Okay, my question. Please prove me the direct oh, harms oh. on consumers. Can you slow down? So seven million lives are specifically saved simply because tech companies are analyzing our data. Yes. So it's still the hospitals giving out the drugs, and people are still having to buy these drugs, and tech companies okay, are not. So, okay. Okay. Okay, here first, the 7 million lives is the whole uh, like whole impact of our first argument. We gave you combating polio virus and second drug distribution, not only drug distribution, okay? So second, we tell you actually because tech companies, they made a first try, that is save lives. This is a first try, not only, like, we, we can't say that actually uniquely, but actually this is the first choice and also the only like institution helping. Okay, so okay. our question turn now. Thank you. So can you prove to me with data, what is the direct harm on consumers? Because I can't feel that one quick trillion dollars loss. It's not terminal impact. Well, data breaches isn't our own contention. Can we tell you that first this is identity theft and your data is sold off to the back markets? But if you look okay, at our okay, other okay. contentions, we'll also tell you about false ads and how 250,000 kids a year are dying because they're trusting these false ads on, on Amazon okay, okay. and other tech companies. So that is not our only contention in today's debate. Okay, move on to my question. So you talk about how you're able to reduce homicides. How is that possible? Oh, homicides, yes, please. Okay, so homicides because actually we have data about some people, their personal data, and we know what like kind of person this is, and we actually can prevent it before they came to kill. Also, we have data about their actions, what they bought, like online, they killed, they bought a knife that without their need or something like that. That's actually the algorithm, and we can't approve to you because. 
how many deaths has been prevented simply because tech companies are stopping homicide? Homicides, actually first, uh, we gave you our main income, life savings in our first argument. Okay, secondly, about homicides, we tell you 38% per 100,000 inhabitants. If you want to say all the homicides, how many in the world, I saw, sorry, I can't give it to you. No accurate number, okay? So maybe my question tried to talk about dangerous drug killing children. So actually, I told you the link is weak. Can you tell me any, like, uh, to give me cards or blocks to prove actually those ads are posted by tech companies, but not by Medicare institutions? Okay, we tell it doesn't matter who is the ones posting. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, sorry. Let me follow up just one sentence. Because if tech companies are not personalizing your okay, service and like actually... Uh, we're telling that pharmaceutical companies spends four billion dollars a year on yeah. consumer. You're targeting pharmaceutical, yeah, pharmaceutical health. companies, not tech companies. Sorry, not tech companies. Sorry, Thank you. Uh, I like to run prep. Sure. Uh, okay, I think I'm ready. Okay, so um, judges ready, uh, opponents ready. Our time starts now. So firstly, before anything, a few points of clarification, right? So judges would like to remind you that firstly, on our contention about healthcare, my opponents misunderstood our sub point A about um, the poliovirus and rebutted it using the COVID-19 example. We see no link between COVID-19 and poliovirus. Therefore, we believe that they actually dropped our sub point A. And secondly, on to sub point B, the only rebuttal they offered was that there was no link, which my teammate offered in, her, uh, in the second crossfire, was that this argument continues to stand because they're using uh, the collecting of text messages, and therefore we believe that that's, continue, uh, that's definitely in within today's framework of personal data but used by tech companies. So furthermore, I think, uh, expanding to this, they've actually said that it's a hospital that are actually selling this um, drug. First thing we tell you that it's A distribution, it's drug distribution, it's actually sold for free because it's the purpose of it is to actually increase the uh, efficiency of the distribution and not, not actually to gain money for like selling drugs. But furthermore, we tell that the argument has not been rebutted except for anything on this. Secondly, on the, um, security. My opponent offered no other rebuttal except for saying that in U.S. the prime rates say the same. Well, we tell you that well, well, we tell you that they have to offer us an empirical study of a global prime rate saying the same or etc. Or else they simply fail to actually um, combat, combat to our like uh, contention to about security. But furthermore, their only argument was about how like polices are killing like uh, black people have a th three three like around three times easier to be killed by like tech comp like by uh, police. However, we thought that's simply false, right? Because our evidence states that our evidence actually tells you that uh, when when people are actually like when people are actually like um suspected to be a criminal, they are met by like handcuffs or jail, but to a park rec room or church basement where they're met with pizza and soda instead of handcuffs. You don't see how there's a possibility of people to be killed three, three times more because the way the police are dealing with this simply does not suggest we're putting, in, we're putting them in jail directly after we suspect them, right? So basically all their um, rebuttals fail and we're moving on to the first, uh, the clashes. Firstly on lies, we tell that we definitely outweigh and impact outweigh in today's debate. Firstly, we tell that we, in our first contention solidly, we tell you we offer a 7 million impact to, uh, only in our first contention. All of their impacts, even if pretend that we our rebuttals don't exist, pretend that our rebuttals to like um health ads don't exist, their their, their impacts um are still too small to compare to be, to be compared to our seven million impact. But furthermore, on the um, argument about health ads, we tell you that searching on Google and then Google like and then the results popping out with ads is simply normal, right? If you search on Google for like health ads, it's obviously going to pop you up with health ads, or else what is it going to pop you up with? with right? This argument is simply problematic regarding that it's simply natural for Google to do so. We don't see any way of how Google should deal with this other way. So we believe that this argument actually has a, uh, is logically problematic. But secondly, on the clash about security, right? Opponents say that security is uh, continuously decreased. However, they fail to offer any empirical study or any evidence that shows that this is not happening. Their only response was that America's crime rate stayed the same. While we're not talking about America, our only evidence about America was about Manhattan. That's only like around like a fifth of our argument. We believe that that's totally not um, enough to actually respond to our argument. And lastly, on the clash, about money, we tell you that we directly benefit because we offer a long-term solvency. All the arguments, all the uh, money arguments they offer in their contention, we have solvency. We told you, and we tell you that it's working since customers can feel it. We don't see how a solvable problem should be answered I'm anymore. Before, therefore, so proud to oppose. A propose. Sorry. Can we please use a minute and ten seconds? Sure. Thank you.
Uh, can we pause the timer, but uh, can we please check a piece of evidence? Mm -hmm. I beg your pardon? Can we please check a piece of evidence? Uh, so, uh, you can? Uh, can we please have the evidence that says that 7 million lives thing? Yeah. Send your code instead of sending to all of servers. Can you just send in the chat the, the website? Yeah. Uh, I'm not in front of all of the servers. Oh. Sorry? We had of servers and we can get the link to you. So if you just well, send a link. Well then, can you give it to us somehow? Because we have to check. Yeah, sure. Okay, thanks. Um, when you find it, can you please send it in the chat? Uh, yeah. now we're looking. Uh, it's just like. Okay, okay. sure. Thanks. Uh, we sent the link through to the judges, and I think like there's a problem because I put all the healthcare links together. So if you want to find out like the only seven million, you probably can you send it to us. Can, it, can you send it to us? Because we can't check it otherwise. Judge can check as well. I mean, I don't yeah. want really want to give the link to. But we have to check the evidence so yeah. that we know it's true. Yeah, yeah, we're sending it because we can't give you a link because we are reliable evidences, okay? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so you, you could send it as a private message to them. And can we ask for a fact check as well? Please. Okay, so we're asking for um, 250,000 children killed every year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 that was for dangerous drug. Oh, I'm asking for 43,000 people were killed because of risk of violence. Yeah. Okay. 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 Is there a link? Yes, uh, we will be sending it to you. Oh, I mean, did you see our link? Um, um, no, we haven't received it. Send it through. So 
okay, my partner sent it to you. Wait, oh, she sent it to me. Do, do, do you see the links? Oh, oh, sorry. I think it's my problem. Sorry, I'll copy it again. Oh my god, this is tragic. I can't send it to you again. Um, I can't. I don't know why I can't copy. Do you ever see the first one? I can't send it to them. I have your links. Okay, so we can uh, start our prep time. Oh, sure. Connect you to Alicia. Okay. So just. Okay. Time's up. As you asked for one one minute and the ten second. Time up. Okay. Um. So, do you want me to give you the evidence right now, or your I'm partner just can your, your partner can give it while you're doing the summary? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. So, is everyone ready? Okay. Time starts. Now, we believe that we have won today's debate for several reasons. First of all, I'd like to make a clarification. We believe that uniqueness is not required in this case. Simply because other things cause the same harm does not mean that this harm does not exist simply because of Tycomini's usage of data. Now, moving on to the main points of today's debate, we believe that we should follow quantitative and status quo benefits and harms. Now, moving on to the first point, which is healthcare. Our opponents talk about preventing viruses and distributing drugs. However, they state how there is no, however, there is no link on our opponent's side. How, and also, the, and also, they haven't shown any impacts here because. 10% of people are not willing to show their medical data to, to tech companies. Well, it shows that people do not trust tech companies at all, and therefore the benefits on our opponent's side are not accessible. We also tell you that our opponents are simply assuming that certain things will happen because there, are, there, has, been no, uh, there has been no real benef benefits on our opponent's side. The 7 million evidence is not because of tech companies by itself, and simply because of that big data overall. Now moving on to the next point, which is fairness and discrimination. Our opponents bring up AI and homicide prevention while we talk about discriminatory policing. They say how AI can create a better society. However, homicide, they haven't given us any number how this is resolved and they haven't shown how this has actually happened in a specific example here because they're simply saying that we can look at text messages. But what happens after? There's no impact on our opponent's side. However, on our side, we show that the reason why discriminatory happens is because of AI. What happens is that 80% of the information on the AI system is used by the US to find criminals is actually wrong. What this shows is that 80% of innocent people are thrown into jail for absolutely no reason. And also, based on their specific piece of evidence about Predpool in their own case, 3.5 times more black people are shot by policemen than white. This simply shows their opponent's points are clearly not standing. Also, let's move on to the next no, they also, now moving on to it, moving on to the, uh, the homicide point. The crime rate has not reduced in the entire world. Since 1960, the crime rate has stayed the flat, the, the exact same. Even though they say that the whole worldwide is impacted, however, their evidence is actually flawed because they are only stating that it is because of smart technology, not because of tech companies by itself and its usage of data specifically. Now, moving on to the final point, which is economy. They said how data breaches are hypothetical in the crossfire. However, for example, in 2013, the New York Times states how 3 billion Yahoo users, email addresses, birth dates, and phone numbers were exposed. They tell us that we don't have a quantitative impact or a specific impact to this point. However, on our side, we tell you that $1.5 trillion are lost due to cybercrime. And for example, let's just show the impact here. According to Quartz 2019, Facebook showed a scamming ad for at least 45 million times, targeting vulnerable seniors, 9,000 victims lost at least $300 million. What this shows is that poor people can clearly be harmed due to these targeted ads, and therefore, we stand on the cross side. Thank you. We're on the crossfire. Yeah. Um, can we please send the, uh, we'll, we'll be sending the piece of evidence first. So. Sure. So are you sending us directed your link? Yes, uh, I already sent it to your partner. Partner. Okay, so we can start a crossfire. Okay. 
So our time starts now. First question about high mortgage, which you simply drop. But I actually want to ask you about how many direct loss is actually happening for consumers. We tell you that the scores have cost three hundred seventy-one billion dollars among racial minorities. Yeah. Okay. So who? I mean, in your case, we see billions, okay. trillions, but none of us have felt that. We are just feeling anxiety, but we didn't feel this. So who feel that? Who are harmed? The people that are racial minorities, the black people, the Latinos, they're harmed okay. because they are poor. And they okay, are because, okay, I'm asking dollars for dollars. trillions of dollars in your whole case. Only like black people harmed from like trillions of dollars lost. I don't understand that. And also we gave you racial the, like decreasing the racial discrimination, right? We're telling you here is that because tech companies or data brokers are giving, are actually they're the ones that are giving information to the insurance companies. So therefore insurance companies are using the data provided by tech companies to discriminate. And we tell that specifically because of this, a $371 billion has been costed by the racial minority. Okay, moving on to our questions. Why should we only cherry pick examples and not, not consider the overall crime rate of the US? Oh, okay, you mean over our primary in the U.S. It's the same. We gave it regional and worldwide. Okay, also about a black yeah. people. Do you actually, okay, so insurance companies don't know that you're black or how old are you if you're not, like, getting big data from tech companies? Our question a little bit, because we believe that the U.S. has a bigger magnitude than just Manhattan as a city itself. So why should no, we our evidence, our evidence doesn't yeah, actually oh, only talk about Manhattan. As I explained, well, Manhattan is only a fifth of our whole... Our okay, so evidence about Manhattan yeah. is only a fifth. Your evidence about forty percent of people is flawed because it isn't about smart technology. How about 30, 33 percent burglary, twenty one percent violent crimes? We exactly. offer that's it's only like technology companies collection of data. Okay, it's, it would be nice to offer an evidence before this crossfire, but I don't see any. Okay, so actually, mostly drop our biggest aim pattern, our like yeah. point one, which you simply talk about COVID nineteen. Okay, maybe our question turn about your uh, two hundred fifty thousand people killed per year about children, right? Okay, so can you give us our any our examples that tech companies use their data to like target you with their ads and post that ads on you, but not like after you search and give you Medicare data, uh, the, uh, Medicare. Okay, we're not talking about Medicare in this specific case scenario. We're telling, what we're telling here on these wrong false at drug ads is that tech companies are advertising these false drugs. For example, if I have knee pain and I'm searching up knee pain online, instead of actually giving me the real knee pain, knee pain medicine, it's giving me these fake no, medicines. I don't think how that works. I don't yes, think okay, that's how it works, right? Actually, tech companies I, do not okay, okay, okay. I got it. I got your point. I got your point. Let me let me say what we're feeling is actually first yeah. we tell you your search and you can search your keys are easy your personal data. So we define personal data identifiable when it comes to a person. Second, we tell you if it's not personal data, second, we don't even get your data to get you asked. Okay. Fine. Thank you. I will run my crap time. Thank you. Sure. Time's up. Okay. So, um, 
pro size glass beach stars now. As we both agreed on framer life saving, let's say why we should win this uh, debate on life saving because they never rebut our like uh, framer in their rebuttal. So first, the breaches. Actually, we tell this doesn't feel the framer, even the one point five trillion dollars loss, and we get, actually gave you like in your case, we're actually saving money as well because actually, judge, we tell you there are no terminal impact. They said this actually harm society, but are we harmed? Remember about the do we harm that we lost our, like trillions of dollars? Actually, we are harmed so bad. No, we can't feel it. So we are managing actually not big enough to prove on interminable impact. Okay, second dangerous rock. They tell us that kill like hundreds of thousands of children every year. But here, Jack, we tell you what is not topical. Because I mentioned lots of times, when you search something and the tech companies only get your search history, they don't even need to get your personal data. And they give you ads. Those ads and like websites, they're about those wrong drugs and like uh, bad things, but actually this doesn't even like ask for your personal data, which means it's actually off topic. Okay, third argument about high mortgages, they simply drop. And fourth argument, predict police and discrimination would tell us to actually off top, uh, like beyond the truth, because this is not like aggravated discrimination, but only obeying the nature of human nature and discrimination. Okay, last argument, they simply drop about risk of violence. Also, we found that 43,000 people were killed by the topic. As we fact chat our link, their link, we found that they're actually uh, put their, uh, the impact out of the topic to topic. Okay, so maybe just look at something more. Why we should win this debate? Judge, we tell that the problems in today's debate is that they never talk about anything that's happening long term, anything in the future, but furthermore, are also neglecting our impasse and links for things that have already been happening. Judge, we tell you in our first our, our first up point, we tell you we say one point seven twenty some billion Indian, but they just simply drop in and say no link for it rebuttal to that. So they're actually dropping their main impact. Second, let's talk about retribution, they question our seven million lives. Okay, just even we don't think about seven million lives, we simply out because the billions of people we're saving. We tell you, according to our Arabic initiative rules, that it is a life of the program. And tech companies, we give example, are the key in this fight. We tell only because of this first chance, the first step we took, because of tech companies, we win. And we we win those lives. We give the people to choose the chance they have to, they can leave on. Okay, so also we gave you just like this contention. Okay, yes, we affirm. Thank you. And we'll use all the remaining prep time. Thank you. Okay. Time's up. Okay, so is everyone ready? Time starts now. Starting off, we believe that we should judge from a cost-benefit analysis because that way we can weigh the impacts in order to judge who wins today's, today's debate. Okay, here are three reasons you should feel comfortable voting for the con site. First, healthcare. Our phone's biggest evidence throughout the entire contention is that there's this seven million people saved, and then now they talk about how billions of people are saved. However, none of the evidence they provided actually give us any numbers at all. This number is made up by their site. They are only assuming that they can save lives. However, these numbers have not been happening under the South Pole. On our side, we tell you how health car healthcare harms exist because of these faults as advertised from tech companies. We tell you that because tech companies are advertising these false ads to the people who actually need patient help. This is causing 250,000 kids to be dying because they're not getting the adequate medical health care and the adequate medicine they need. They're only being offered these false ads and not the actual medicine that they need to survive. This is causing lives to be taken away directly. The second reason is security. We told you 1.5 trillion women's I required. Our point said it's not relevant and it's not big enough. However, they have no bigger number in our side to outweigh us. They also test but their security on their side is only cherry picking specific cities. Well, we tell you that the overall crime rate in the U.S. has stayed the same since the 1960s. There is no impact on their side. We also tell you that 18% of algorithm their side specifically used is is flawed. We show that 80% of innocent people are thrown into jail because of these matrices and sacrificed for these supposed environment, for these supposed security benefits. They're sacrificing a lot of people, 80% of the people, in order to generate minimized amounts of security on their side. The final reason you should vote for our side is discrimination. Sure, discrimination exists, but discrimination is far worsened because tech companies are collecting data, analyzing it, and giving this wrong algorithm algorithm to the people that such as insurance companies. We show you how because of tech companies providing information for these insurance companies, 
black people are discriminated for $341 billion per year. This means that black people are discriminated and they're not getting the fair rights they're supposed to. And so therefore we need it. Okay, now if any judge want to give some comment or you have decided your result, please send me privately and you can give comment. Okay, so I debaters and I think you you did a great job. Um but I just uh took a few things that I wanted to consider and I will start with the Pro Team PG Academy. I was thinking about your second contention. That had to do with security, and you argue three sub points: uh, basically, crimes, fraud, and homicide. I was actually thinking whether they are all different, whether they are all crimes, or whether they are different. Um, because I, because when you said security, you said crime, and I felt that you would have uh, given another form of uh, an, another security issue that is maybe not a crime, not a simple crime that we will all we'll consider as crime. But I was confused when you said crime and you said fraud and you said homicide. So I was thinking, what is the difference between them? Man? Yes. Well, actually, you argued them, but I was actually confused uh, what you meant by, by those things, although you were able to explain. But I would feel that if I'm the one to debate this point security, when I'm arguing crime, I will argue this happened. On a crime, I will also argue that fraud, I will argue homicide, I will argue whatsoever. But to argue then as separate uh, uh, subpoints, it, 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 it got to me somehow and I was somehow confused. And uh, then the porn team, I, I felt that there was a, there, there was a correction uh, made by the pro team to your argument of COVID-19 as compared to polio um, and uh, I feel that your, 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 your rebuttal was good to the COVID-19 point but actually it was not in the, the arguing lines in the contentions of the, uh, the, the pro team. However, the pro team did, uh, I mean the con team, I pick up five contentions for you uh, the last one I pick up, I don't know whether I'm right, but I pick up something like rates of audience. Um, and then um, 
your 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 contention owner contention two that has to do with insurance and i pick up that what i pick up from there was is like insurance discrimination discriminating people as to who do you insure and who you do not insure um i feel that that was a good argument but then the the pro team did a very little very little rebuttal in that in that area now let's come to the mortgage argument pro all i got from you on this mortgage argument was uh, you see no link uh, you see no link of that uh, contention towards the debate that would be a justification but she, she gave that as a contention that you needed to rebut you needed to make a formal rebuttal in just like giving a sweeping statement i see no link to that energy. so i saw that as a weak rebuttal i i will see that as a weak rebuttal then we move to the issue of crime and uh, the the team the con team argue that crime rate in the u.s has been constant since 1960. Uh, pro argument was this is the debate is not all about the u.s that's right you need to diversify the debate make it more open but then i feel that uh pro i mean con, you would have done a better better argument if you had introduced one two or three different situations wherein you argue that crime rate here has been at this height uh, and it has not fallen since the opponent the pro team was arguing that it is just the u.s i think if you if you have done that that would have made the argument strong but i think the issue of the framework uh it, it was in contestation one is arguing life savings one is arguing cost benefit analysis so it was in contest so basically that's what i saw in this debate and i think you guys did very well reaching the final was not a mistake um the both team that came here they did extremely well but you know whenever we go to a final game there is a winner so i wish the winner a happy congratulations okay sorry to interrupt but now the result has come and all the judges voted for a count so the winner is shyk pao and if there is any judges want to give some comment you can just unmute yourself and give some comment well i vote for Kong um for simple reason i think Kong has a better framework that is to the spirit of the motion like Kong has pointed out the pros arguments about um fraud financial fraud healthcare, uh homicide robbery rate etc those are like like problems with technology in general not specifically tailored to the use of personal data so i feel like you you fail to like really catch the spirit of this motion and moreover the logic link um the gaps are, are quite large when you talk about fraud and lives lost or like crying lives lost I, I hope you could do more analysis to tell me how this leads to um people's um economic loss or life loss uh, life danger step by step rather than just jump there so so yeah i hope you could do more analysis in the future but i, I do have a suggestion for con side like even if you um we all give the win to you. It, it means that you still have room to improve. Like when the pro side has developed uh, arguments that's not not mature enough, like they, they, they miss the link, it's not sufficient to say, hey, they didn't tell us how, how this works. They didn't give us the evidence. They didn't give us the impact. You could, you could go one step further assuming that they have fulfilled their job like they have the link why this is not the case why you should win like even if they are fraud uh, for financial institutions um happening when you have we have use of personal data we say in in this case the, the benefits we have uh or, or sorry the, the uh the risk we have should outweigh the benefits they claimed etc 
So I hope you could engage one step further. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. It's just Ginny Gao. I was so enjoying in this, in, in this debating, okay? This, this is a two very, very strong team. However, it's difficult to make a decision and one team has to go. This is about the competition. And so keep going, okay, keep, keep the good thing. And just, it was just about the competition because only one team is left. So I'm so sorry to see you go, but both of all the four competitors, you are doing so well, excellent, well done. I did enjoy. Thank you very much for the performance. That's all from Jin Liu Gao. Um, hello guys, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, it's like, uh, I will just give several brief uh, adjudication to justify my decision. I think the, in this debate, there are several uh, voting issues. The first is about healthcare. Um, for the pro side, you guys give me a lot of numbers and data to uh, support why this use of personal data actually could improve healthcare. But I didn't see um, the mechanism uh, of your contentions, uh, just like why use this personal data that uh, uh, in, for example, these infectious diseases like malaria, uh, malaria that can actually save so many people. Uh, however, the, the analysis from the con side is like they tell me why that personal data actually will become the uh, like uh, will let these tech companies know the users need and to give them targeted ads and which is especially harmful when it is come to medication. Um, so comparatively, I think in this issue, I think Kong wins over uh, Kong wins in this uh, healthcare contention. The second is about the uh, the crime the crime issue. Uh, the analysis from the pro side is like um, policing could know, for example, the crime rate, uh, the crime type, or the location, or the data of some uh, previous data, then to predict. Uh, yet the response from the con side is like first of all. Uh, Actually, currently, uh, these, uh, the, these, because of these kind of stereotype, or uh, and according to current data, actually, it, it is in first place inaccurate, and uh, these minority, like these Latinos or these African Americans, that are two times higher, um, being suspected of committing crime than other people. Uh, also, they tell they told us that. Uh, even this kind of discrimination will be extended to shooting issues. For example, when police, uh, the police, uh, these police are more likely to shoot these uh, people when it comes to, uh, for example, crime. So in this case, I think, uh, and they also said even if actually the crime crime rate actually is lower, but still uh, a lot of, for example, maybe innocent uh, minorities actually maybe have died, etc. So I don't see why it is justified in the first place to sacrifice these minorities' life and to, uh, for example, to lower the crime rate. And second of all, they told us how these numbers or these so-called so predicting actually is inaccurate. Um, so in this in this issue, I also vote for the con side. Um, the second is about the data breaches. Uh, the, from, from the con side, they told us that actually because of the hacking, of um, the hackers, for example, they're out of the incentive of making profits. So they are likely to hack people and make it into bad use and sell it into the black market, etc. cetera. So, uh, also, they give us the tangible harms of data breaches. Um, yeah, the response from the pro side is like uh, they, it, the response from pro side is simply about the questioning because pro said you didn't see the tangible harms of these consumers. But personally, I think Khan actually gives several tangible harms analysis for uh, average consumers. Um, that's why that I think Khan wins in these several voting issues. That's why I vote for Khan. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I think a, a lot of uh, what I would say has, has already been said, but I'll just add a couple things uh, to just kind of help both sides out with some of the crossfire and some of the big picture issues. Um, so uh, at various points in the debate, it was asked like, why should we only look at specific cities when looking at crime data? Um, I think like your answer could, could just be only a few cities or only some cities are using, um, are using people's data and are collecting personal information to do what's called predictive policing. That's number one. But then number two, the issue is, uh, like we mentioned earlier, um, the predictive policing is only as good as the data and the use of data. And so if there's some kind of bias, despite all attempts at making the algorithms like not biased, but if there is discrimination and stuff, then one kind of wonders, um, all those people who are being arrested, are they really criminals or are they just um, people that like bias data or bias use of data uh, select, like decided is probably gonna be. So be careful with that debate. Um, let's see. Um, con side, uh, I would say um, they, uh, maybe, maybe you can like explain a little bit more um, issues of like cybercrime and theft and um, hacking and breaches and stuff like that. Like I think this whole debate, they're kind of questioning you like, is there really an impact? Is cybercrime really that bad? And you could be like, yes, um, people's savings are destroyed. People's businesses are lost. People uh, get scammed. Um, so like the more you can explain those things uh, in Crossfire or in your speech, uh, the more you can kind of connect with the judges and help us connect the dots. Um, just because like there's so many arguments uh, thrown around and so many numbers uh, that the more you can, can like connect it to real life scenarios, the better. And at some points, like in the first crossfire, I think you did pretty good at that. Um, pro, I would say like try to consolidate in your final focus. Try to like focus on a, a few key issues. I feel like you'd benefit from uh, having a more clear, uh, clear kind of picture of what exactly the benefits are and, and how you outweigh and stuff. Does that make sense? But overall, yeah, really, really great job. Uh, congratulations to both sides. It's been a long, long debate. We've been debating since the early morning. So have a good, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all. It's the end of the competition. You can leave now.